Welcome to Medicine in Three Minutes. As usual, we go straight to the point. The subject is bravely made clear and often illustrated. Today's topic is the celiac plexus. During this presentation, we will successively discuss the definition of the celiac plexus, its anatomy, its location, a remainder of the sympathetic nervous system, modality of plexus transmission, clinic interest, and plexus blocking procedure. The celiac plexus, or uh, known as solar plexus, because of its radiation nerve fiber, it's a network of nerves located in the, in the abdomen near where the celiac trunk of superior mesenteric artery and renal artery unplug from the abdominal aorta at the level of the first lumbar vertebra. The plexus is formed in part by the greater and lesser splanchnic nerve of both sides and fiber from the anterior and posterior vagal trunk. We are at the level of the first lumbar vertebra. Here is the aorta, the inferior vena cava, and the plexus celiac. in front of the aorta. Another view to illustrate, this is the L1 vertebra. Here is the kidney, here is the, the liver, the spleen, the colon. Here is the esophagus with vagal trunk anterior and posterior. Here is the aorta, is the inferior vena cava, and the sympathetic, sympathetic trunk is the green one, and the splanchnic nerve is the yellow one. In a sagittal view, this is the liver, this is the stomach, this is the aorta, this is the celiac trunk, and this is the, the pancreas. The celiac plexus is between the celiac trunk and the liver. The celiac plexus receive the greater and lesser splanchnic nerve and a branch from the right vagus. The two celiac ganglia, the white one, in which the preganglion nerve of the splanchnic nerve synapse lie and the cross of the diaphragm, the blue one, are both the right cross and the left cross. This is the aorta. Each ganglion is about 2 cm in diameter. Some preganglionic fiber that from the plexus supply the adrenal medulla. The rest of the plexus descend over the abdominal aorta and they distribute to the abdominal viscera. Location. It is medial to supra renal gland and above the upper border of the pancreas. This is the pancreas, this is the upper border of the pancreas, this is the medullary two medullary gland and this is the plexus between them. First vertebra liver, two kidney, colon, spleen, vena cava, aorta, esophagus, both 
vagus, the anterior and the, and the posterior. And our structure is the green one and the yellow one. This is a remainder of the sympathetic system. What is the sympathetic system? It is generally admitted that the starting downflow of sympathetic system begins at the level of the hypothalamus here. Axons are polysynaptic and pass through the tegmentum lateral part of the brain stay, transmitting the simulation outflow to the cranial nerve from the spinal cord. To report that, the parasympathetic sends its nerve to cranial nerve through brain stay. The sympathetic outflow is called thoracolumbar. Sympathetic fiber going to head and neck coming essentiellement from T1 and ascending from C8 and T2. Ciliospinal center of bridge is the area of T1 from which emerge sympathetic fiber coming to head. Between T1 and T12, thoraco lumbar outflow and it's coming from the hypothalamus to the ciliospinal of bridge. From the sympathetic, preganglionic arise from thoraco and lumbar region. Fever exits by way of spinal nerve to the nearly sympathetic chain of ganglia. Once in the chain, pregoglionic fiber may follow any of three routes. Some fiber synapse immediately with the postganglion, like this. Some travel up or down the chain before synapsin. You go up or down before synapsin. Some pass through the chain without synapsin. This one is passed through the chain without synapsin. Here is the essential point of the presentation. Between T7, T5, and T9, there is sympathetic chain, and this sympathetic chain it sends by the grid splanchnic to the ganglion celiac, and from the ganglion celiac it goes to the adrenal medulla. From T10 to T11, the lesser splanchnic, lesser splanchnic goes to the celiac ganglion to the adrenal medulla. From T5 to T9, sympathetic chain, there is a greater splanchnic. It goes from celiac ganglion to the renal artery in the, in the kidney. The difference between here and here in this circuit, there is uh, a connection here in the ganglion. Here there is no connection in the ganglion. There is no synapse. Here there is a synapse. Here there is no synapse. The greater splanchnic and lesser splanchnic, they go to the celiac ganglion, to the medulla. On the other hand, the sympathetic chain coming from T5 to T9 to the renal artery from the celiac ganglion, there is synapse. This is about the sympathetic. For the parasympathetic coming from the medulla, dorsal motor nucleus of vagus following the vagus nerve go through the renal artery. Greater splanchnic nerve formed by preganglionic fibre from T5 to T9 ganglion 
and rely in, select, uh, in uh, celiac ganglion. Lesser sponclinic nerve formed by preganglion fever from T10 to T12 ganglion relay an aorto-renal ganglion. Here is the aorto-renal ganglion. Here is the celiac ganglion. T5 to T9 is coming here without synapsin. There is no synapse before it reaches the medulla. T10 to T12, it goes through the aortic renal ganglion and the synapse. There is a postsynaptic, a presynaptic and postsynaptic going to the kidney. Another way to illustrate, there is no connection here, there is no synapse, and here there is a synapse uh, coming from white rami communicant, and this is a sympathetic trunk, presynaptic fever and postsynaptic fever. When it goes to the medulla, there is no synapse in the ganglion. When it goes to the kidney, there is synapse in the aortic renal ganglion. The celiac plexus convey pain and sensation from upper abdominal viscera. The sympathetic fever greater splanchnic nerve from T5 to T5 join the upper part of the celiac ganglion. Lesser splanchnic nerve join the outer renal ganglion. Type of fiber, sympathetic, parasympathetic, and general visceral afferent. When a person is having pain from one of abdominal organ, the celiac plexus block may relieve the discomfort. Ongliatitis, cancer, upper abdominal cancer, any chronic abdominal pain. How to manage that? Outpatient procedure, local intravenous sedation with separate needle, under image guidance, both diagnostic and therapeutic purpose. Thank you for watching this episode of Medicine in 3 Minutes. Would you like to click the like button and subscribe? Your comments are very welcome. Thank you.